Hey everybody, welcome to spring of 2023. Although in Manitoba we have several seasons, uh, there's winter and then there's spring and then there's fake spring and then there's winter again and it takes a while, some years, before we actually get into long-term regular riding weather. And I, you know, a bit of a bit of a news junkie, environmentalist, and I realized that depending on where you are in the world, uh, climate change has uh, manifested itself in different ways. But uh, I'm not sure. It's it's you know, climate change is something over a long-term pattern. But uh, I swear, if I remember correctly, um, as a kid, we didn't have so much unstable weather leading up to spring. When spring was here, spring was here. So anyway. Uh, once again, typical Canadian, if you want to uh, start talking to a Canadian, you talk about the weather. So that's how I start off <laughs> my springtime uh, video logs, is discussions about the weather. Um, so what that means to say is, even though this bike looks uh, relatively clean, I have had it out for uh, two stints, only about 150 kilometers so far. These Those days were about uh, 10 or 11 degrees Celsius. Uh, my American friends can look up the uh, Fahrenheit rating. Anyway, it's friggin' cold. Um, but I did get out and uh, just talk about a few changes that I did either over the winter or at the tail end of the fall or right away in spring to, uh, to prepare. So uh, as you can see, the wheels are black because the orange wheels are over there. So the idea I had, and, and I got lucky with some uh, savvy eBaying and that sort of thing, is to uh, get a spare set of wheels. Um, got one used, uh, did a lot of uh, uh, research and buying, I think it was the front new was cheaper than trying to find one used uh, and some discs and rotors. So basically it's a straight swap. So when I go to track days, um, it's simple. I get uh, the, the, the Duke up on the uh, wheel stands and then we'll swap in the orange wheels. And the other thing too, is that if someday I go uh, well, even a local track day, but if I go down to the States or something like that and, and you know, you've been on the road for 12 hours and you only bring slicks, if it rains both days, you're, you're sunk literally. So at least these, which are a, a decent, I think, um, street uh, sporty tire, Dunlop uh, Sports Marts, I think, um, will be enough to get me at least on the track instead of, you know, driving 12 hours to Nebraska and sitting on my butt because it's raining. So uh, I haven't obviously got the Q4s on yet because it's too freaking cold. Uh, might as well store them inside for another, makes no difference. Another couple of weeks aren't going to make a huge difference. So a few other things. Um, uh, the levers that I put on, uh, yeah, these seem to work good. They're a nice option. Certainly they're, they're inside of, of the bar ends. So if I do happen to dump this thing, these aren't going to uh, bust off. Or if they do, I've probably got a Bentan Levar and, and far more far more problems than just a, a snapped off lever. So these are kind of nice. I would have liked a little more uh, reach here, but they, they are what they are. Um, like a good mechanic, uh, changed the oil, uh, you know, fired the bike up, got it running. I had the battery inside all winter, not on a constant charger, but every couple months I'd, I'd put it on the charger and, and charge it up again. So it started up fine, battery's working great. So fresh oil, um, new uh, canister filter, and then uh, the two cartridge filters that go behind the, uh, the bolts on the left-hand side, just cleaned those up and they were clean. Uh, again, not a whole lot of miles on this oil, um, but it's, it's, you know, it's one of those things when you leave oil sitting in a bike for six months over the winter, um, it's not ideal. So swap that out. Screens look good. So that's always uh, positive to hear. Uh, it's still got uh, a bit of the, uh, so I put a full tank of gas in this, in the, uh, in the fall when I went to uh, store it, fuel stabilizer inside it, which again, if you live in Canada, you know, full well that that's our, our reality. And so I'm running through this tank of fuel and, and for some reason, again, it's the mechanical <laughs> sympathizer in me. I don't know if the octane changes or the quality of the uh, fuel changes, but I haven't really been, uh, been twisting the throttle too hard um, on it. Uh, I have uh, certainly progressively brought the bike up to extra legal speeds when the roads and conditions and traffic allowed, and it sounds fine. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I, I don't want to really give it the beans until I've got some brand new fresh fuel in there. Uh, over the winter, I did put in, uh, I did get a deal on a, a Rottweiler intake kit with k &N filter. Some guy had had it used and uh, was selling it. Uh, so I got that for about 60% of, of retail, which is decent for uh, used parts. Uh, and luckily I have all the goop to clean the filters, dry the filters, and then re-oil the filters. So that's under the seat here. Not too exciting. And since then, Rottweiler, if you're a KTM guy, you know, has got this uh, new intake design that looks really racy and sexy and light. But um, what I'm seeing is that, uh, I don't know if people are debating or, or disagreeing, but uh, like a lot of manufacturers or, or sellers, they make claims about performance upgrades and, and all that sort of stuff. And I don't know, um, with, uh, with modern bikes, I'm, I'm a bit reluctant to really muck with the, uh, with the exhaust system unless it's got a proper tune and I'm in the middle of nowhere. So getting a proper tune doesn't mean, you know, riding my bike up the street and, uh, and dropping it off at a, at a performance shop for a weekend. So I did see that, uh, either EDR performance or Rottweiler, you know, made a request. Um, can, uh, can someone drop off uh, their 890R, like a, a 2020 or newer uh, for a couple weeks in exchange, you know, you'll get all the parts we've developed for it, like a Power Commander 6 and a, and a free map and that sort of thing. So again, it's funny, right? Like in Canada, we're without using our bikes for six months at a time. I'd love to drop it off to a heated tuning shop and have them install, you know, high performance parts for basically free, but uh, you know, that's California. So uh, I did put a video on before about, uh, about the exhaust and I'll get to that in a bit. Um, I'm missing turn signals <laughs> and uh, complicated. So when I put this tail tidy on, which is in one of my uh, earlier videos, um, the direction of the exhaust is such that uh, the tip there got melted, even though I had the guard on. So the, it's a European company. So the, the guard is intended for uh, KTM LED tail lights or indicators, as the Brits would say, uh, from Europe. LED smaller, and so they don't sit proud of this piece here. But when this is on, and it's just this metal piece, um, just the very tip is exposed. And sure enough, when this was at the shop and they were doing the, uh, I think it was a thousand kilometer. Um, checkup. Uh, it was, it sat idling for a while and, and cooked the tip of that. So uh, I thought I had an idea where I could uh, use some um, KNS turn signals, which are a shorter stock, same, um, same th uh, thread, I think it's M10 here. Um, and, you know, thought I could just bolt those on and, and, you know, fit, I uh, have the proper KTM uh, connectors on this end and then it was not successful. Um, I know a bit about wiring, but uh, and some guys have fitted LEDs to their 890s and, and done some neat um, swaps with indicators, but the end result was I wasn't getting it blinking properly. Even though both of them had incandescent uh, lights, obviously the, uh, the resistance on this is different than the resistance on the KNS uh, turn signals, so um, this one was pooched anyway. So the bottom line is I'm getting a, uh, a new turn signal left and right for this OEM from KTM cheaper than buying moto gadget LEDs and then trying to get the right resistors and connectors and all that sort of stuff it's going to be plug and play and I've taken this and um, this used to be aluminum and kind of stuck out so I spent some time yesterday and did the same thing out of um, carbon fiber so this is some carbon fiber sheet that uh, I got off an eBay seller a while ago from a different uh, project it's interesting when I went to um, I, I touched this up and tried to get this curve nice and uniform on the grinder and little bit of sparks would come out. So this isn't pure carbon fiber, it's carbon fiber with some fiberglass in there as well and, and maybe even some metal uh, mesh reinforcement uh, maybe sandwiched in there for, uh, for stiffness. But anyway, it's better than a, a very uh, bright and noticeable piece of... Uh, aluminum sticking on there and this just sandwiches behind the turn signal on this side and and keeps this from being cooked again when I get my new signals they're about 35 bucks Canadian each from uh, KTM and luckily they have them in stock 
Uh, there's a couple of things that I've ordered for this bike that have been back ordered for months and months and months. Um, silly things like uh, I lost one of these. Actually, I lost both of them. So I, there's a special shouldered uh, spacer and, and I think it's an M5 Torx bolt that goes in there. Back ordered, I ordered it in July, I think, of last year. Still nothing. Um, reservoir cap, same thing, a little bit of orange bling back ordered no idea when they're going to get it and i had really considered uh to get more serious about track days and who knows maybe even race this thing don't tell anybody um i thought about maybe a uh, power parts belly pan there is a company uh that out of france that has been making them and actually has them in stock and has been delivering them for all of last year's uh super hooligan class and again this year s2r um but it, it's funny, like I'd go into the shop and, hey, what's the status on that uh, Power Parts belly pan? And it went from uh, December 31st, February 31st, April 31st, and now it's May 26th. So obviously, if you're waiting on one of those and, and you're a club racer guy, <coughs> you're a bit hooped. <coughs> you might have to do the old lock wire, the turkey baster pan um, to the to the bike. And it wouldn't be too terribly difficult to fabricate something like there's some nice uh, studs here uh, in the uh, in the engine case that you could you could fit some brackets to and, and come up with something. But I've I've tried to make belly pans over the last two decades. I've been involved with bikes and racing bikes, and you know the end result kind of kind of looks crap when it's and, and you don't and the materials aren't cheap either. So it's might as well, you know, wait till you get something right. And there's just something you shouldn't, some things you shouldn't faff about, uh, especially on a new bike. That thing, if you've seen my other vlogs, um, is where I get my jollies out of fabricating stuff from scratch. So if you're interested in old Ducati replicas, um, check out my other videos. Uh, you can see the progress of that. So, so yeah, the exhaust. Um, so I fitted this exhaust in uh i even did a it was it was amazing like it was uh it was like the world's quickest install video no it's not a leo vinci it's uh it's a dominator exhaust from poland of all places give me a sec here And for what I paid for it, like this is lovely. Um, so I uh, installed it on the bike. It literally took me five minutes. The longest it took was for me to find a better uh, bolt to use here uh, with a proper uh, M8 lock nut. This is a bit long, so I'll, I'll go through my bolts again and try to get something shorter. But anyway, uh, fitted it. Um, no baffle. Uh, you can see a hole there maybe in the inside of that where uh, one of uh, Dominator's baffles goes and uh, fired it up and light you know beautiful welds like look at that that's that's amazing and for the price i paid i think shipped around 400 canadian which is about 28 dollars us well a bit more than that um it, i think is an amazing deal uh carbon fiber tip um you know the flare fits perfectly like it literally took me and you can you can find the video on my on my list of videos it took me minutes to install uh, lined up perfectly um, and unfortunately my my video technique at the time I had a GoPro um, strapped a head strap to my side and the video was kind of crap but uh, anyway uh, I, I had it on over the winter uh, took it out for a ride and and it's like it has two different uh, uh, personalities so in town, or when you're on it and going up and down the gears and, and twisting the throttle, it sounds fantastic. Like like popping a little bit of bit of deceleration popping and sounds great. And you know it's it's a really you know decent racy racy sounding exhaust even with the cat converter and um, not too loud. But when I took it on my longer trip on the highway for about 120 kilometers, just droning along at uh this the same speed droning droning was the word of the day um not quite annoying not too loud but just 
Well, it was annoying. It, it didn't sound too too great. And I don't know if any of the aftermarket exhausts sound great at a steady throttle. And um, maybe I'm getting old. But the idea of you know going on a three-day tour with that in, in the background, uh, even with earplugs in, not interested in it. So two things. I've, I've got that <laughs> for sale again. So this is the third exhaust I've tried on this thing. I could probably start up my own uh, my own website, but I'm not going to give it away. So if I don't if I don't sell it, I'll keep it and put it on for track days because if you're at the track, it would sound outstanding. It would sound awesome, but um, you know, a bit annoying if you're in town and definitely uh, if you're again bombing along the highway at, at 60 to 70 miles an hour. It just doesn't have a great resonance and you probably can never do that. So this is back on because it's on the street. It's overly quiet. It still sounds okay. Um, and yeah, if I end up selling that, I'll leave that on permanently. If someone tries to lowball me or I don't end up selling that, I'll just swap it on and off for when I go to track days because literally it, it, uh, it, it's this, it, it takes more time to remove the the rear signal and brake light cluster than it does to take that uh, to to remove that exhaust and because it's so simple you don't end up chewing up the uh, the gasket that goes there so slick as uh, slick as seagull poop but uh, yeah just this simply doesn't make any sense to uh, to uh, you know give it away or or whatever it's it takes two minutes or five minutes to swap out so it's worth it for the tracks track anyway. Um, one thing I've noticed too, uh, aftermarket, uh, road, well not aftermarket, used OEM rotors, there is a slight pulse. So there has been concern about, uh, about these rotors that uh, if, if they're not, you know, if you do any hard braking or, I don't know, if you abuse it in some way or another, um, they can warp a bit and I think one of them has a slight warp to it, but it's hardly noticeable. <clears throat> and if it's on my street bike, again, that's fine. I'm going to want straight pulse free rotors on the race wheels but uh but yeah it's uh that's 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 a risk you take with uh with aftermarket um or or buying used i guess anyway um so yeah i think the black wheels look great um so i think that was a good choice on the street a bit stealth um the company and i've put links on my previous uh vlogs that made uh, this for me for, again, a fraction of the cost of the full sticker kits that you can get. Um, also has some pieces here. I'm not sure how well it's gonna stick. This is a textured surface, but when it finally warms up so that it's not, you know, minus three right now, um, I'll, I'll apply that and, and see how well it, it sticks. But again, for about 16 pounds, if it doesn't, if I don't like the look of it or, um, or it doesn't stick well uh, it's it's worth the uh, it's worth the risk so yeah um, just again this is the time of year where other more professional vloggers do their uh, do their bike tests or first ride videos and they've got six GoPros and 360 degree cameras and um, I can also talk into their camera they've got a mic set up for their helmet on their chin bar so they can speak as they ride I don't have any of that stuff but I gotta say that um, if you're if you're on the fence about buying uh, an 890R, or for that matter, I think an 890 or a 790, um, do it. Uh, it's a fantastic bike. This time last year, or slightly later than this time last year, I was I was getting on my my RC8, and so this is a bike that I'd bought from a fellow racer. Spent the COVID winter uh, rebuilding it, um, putting it back to street, getting it painted. Um, selling some race parts that paid for the cost of getting the other parts restored and I got on it and yeah I enjoyed riding it but it was just so you know it's not that it was super powerful it was just tiptoe you know because it's such a such a hard bike to ride on the street and the type of roads I have around here whereas with this thing you know check the tire pressures fuels in it fired up go and and it's so comfortable to ride i think even at a long distance even with no fairing so in terms of a, a practical realistic bike to use every day unless you live on a racetrack or unless it's a it's a track bike only these these middleweight nakeds um i think are are definitely the way to go um 
the dealer that I bought this from, I went in there and they have a brand new 1290 Duke R Evo or something like that. You know, you just look at that and you start to drool, but it's $26,000, I think. Um, and, you know, has 180 horsepower and electronic everything. And it's very cool. But again, you know, I where I live, it's, it's totally unnecessary. So I wonder if you'll ever be able to sell that or he'll have to uh, do some dealer swaps and and ship it to another province uh, and get something else in return so anyway definitely not a case of buyer's remorse and as you can see um, I'll, I'll, you know we've got the Hawk 750 we got the GS X 8s um, Duke 790 Duke 890 um, 890R even those CF moto bikes, like they've got a 700, it, it really makes a lot of a lot of sense. And I, what I hope it does is it is it draws people into the sport of motorcycling, um, keeps old farts like me riding uh, and interested in riding. And it's a great track bike. And you know we can see what's happening down in the states with Moto America. They've got a whole class um, of bikes of this configuration. My conspiracy theory is is that they've totally uh, uh, buggered the KTM so that the Indians win all the races, <clears throat> but Indian is sponsoring the series. Probably not a fair comment, but um, it's certainly fun to, to, to watch a bike that you ride compete and not a whole lot of modifications to it. So, so yeah, definitely want to get out to the track a bunch of times this year. Um, and then, um, you know the mystery underneath this uh, fitted sheet um, unless you've watched my other vlogs you know that that will be a fun track bike but the nice thing is to have something like this uh, to ride on the track just how capable it is is uh, is a lot of fun it's nice to be at the track with something with a bit of horsepower um, rather than what I have done for my whole club racing career is show up at the track with you know Ninja 500s, Ninja 650s, Ducatis, you know, 900s, <coughs> relatively underpowered bikes that were competitive in their class, but you just get murdered down the straights all the time. And with this thing, with the bit of power it has and its corning ability, I can at least embarrass a few 600s and, and 750s for sure. So anyway, I'm starting to get hypothermia, so I'll shut the video down now. But um, yeah, I've noticed that... Uh, that uh, some of my 890R vlogs have like 10,000 views. Um, so that's kind of cool. I guess people are looking at the, the nicest and the newest and hopefully um, what, I've, uh, what I've shared with people helps. As always, your results may vary, but uh, yeah, hopefully to get some onboard track day footage on this thing as well as uh, some, more, uh, some more mods, although not a whole lot needs to be modified. Anyway, like and subscribe and uh, we'll have some more updates uh, as the weather improves.